Hi teachers, so this Bite Size PD is Jamboard Alternatives, Unlocking the Potential of Digital Collaboration. So the learning intention for this session is I'm learning about educational technology applications that provide and or can be used as collaboration boards to provide opportunities for students to engage in the learning process through actions like discussion, collaboration, and problem solving. Uh, the success criteria, you'll be able to select an appropriate collaboration board that will support the learning goal identified for a specific learning task or activity that you want to implement with your students. So really with this Bite Size PD, it's about letting you know um, some great collaboration board options that we have available in our district. So I'm not going to read all of the bullet points on this slide, but it's here if you are someone who utilized Jamboard um, and weren't aware of some of the changes, or you are, and maybe you're freaked out a little bit, but just a few of the highlights with Jamboard is officially going away. They made this announcement a year ago, um, but the official end date is December 31st, 2024. Um, between now and then, users can export their JAM files as PDFs or PNGs or image files before that deadline. Um, but something to be aware of is October 1st of this year, 2024, um, anything you export will be view only, meaning anything you export uh, can't be edited in another platform. And one of the programs I'm going to show you today does provide a way for you to take a Jamboard that you created in the Google Jamboard and put it into that program if that's something you want. But this is just good information for you to be aware of, uh, just knowing important dates that Jamboard is going away for sure. Their main reasoning for this is they feel like there's so many other programs out there that do the same type of thing that it didn't feel, I guess they didn't feel like it was worth the time spent, maybe the money being spent on it to keep it going. So. Uh, before I show you some of the Jamboard re replacement options or collaboration board options, just want to remind you to connect it to instructional strategies. Uh, the use of collaboration boards in the classroom with students, whether it's asynchronously, meaning it's not real time, or synchronously, meaning it's in the moment real time, um, it's opportunities for students to collaborate um, with one another, to contribute to conversations and discussions where sometimes you may not get a student's voice or hear a student's voice because maybe they're too shy or afraid to speak up. Um, it's a way for you to assess whether it's pre-assess a concept that's going to be taught or maybe do like an exit ticket or to assess a concept that was just taught. Um, and really it's a way to, to make learning visible. Um, and two of the pages you're seeing on this screen come from our instructional playbook. So when I think about opportunities for using collaboration boards, uh, whether it's digital or even just paper, like you could do this with a butcher paper and have students collaborate with one another, but it's ways to provide opportunities to respond and knowing um, with our AVID schools and in our district, utilizing Wicker or Wizard, Wiser um, strategies, like how can you get students to like write, to speak, um, just thinking of those instructional practices to get students engaged with the learning. So the first option, and I'm going to go in and out of this presentation just so you can um, get a better view of what I'm talking about, but this will really be a surface level overview with some future professional developments. Our bite-sized PDs can go deeper on at least two of the ones I want to talk about because uh, I realized it would they, they deserve to have more time. But this session just really let's show you some options out there and you can maybe start exploring what interests you. So one that I know a lot of teachers out there use is Padlet. Uh, it is available for free with some limitations if you stick with the free version. The free version is actually what I use and it's been okay for me. Um, and the reason is I will reuse the same three Padlets over and over again. So you'll see that first bullet here says you can have up to three Padlets that are all customizable. Um, it provides real-time collaboration. Within these Padlets, there's unlimited posts, which can be text, images, leaks, links, videos, files. There's some basic privacy settings. There is a way for teachers to set up some moderation and commenting options or disable commenting. Um, Padlet provides a way for teachers to share a Padlet for students to access and use and contribute to. That can be shared via a link 
or you can actually embed it on like a, a Canvas page just to make that more easily accessible to your students. And it provides some basic analytics. Um, I'll be honest, when it comes to the analytics, that's not something I actually use. But um, with Padlet, it's just Padlet.com, you create a basic account. Um, you'll see right now I only have one. I actually have, I think I have two accounts just because I've, over the years, forget what I signed in with. But um, so with this account, I could actually create two more for free. But here's one that I've done. I actually set this up where the training I was doing, we were talking about specific scenarios. And so your Padlets don't have to be set up in columns like I am. It can be, um, maybe it's just a, a random brainstorm, but you'll see where it's easy for the little plus sign in the corner for someone to click and add. And this is where they can add the different content, write something. There's even a heart um, where they can like different people's posts. So it goes beyond just post an idea or share whatever the answer might be, and then you can have them review, like, and even comment if you choose to include comments. So on the right-hand side, just some basic, the gear is where I can go into the settings, where I can adjust my title, the description, even the appearance. So you'll see the format I chose is the wall, but there's some other options that you can utilize and explore to see what works best for you. Um, you'll see where you can actually enable or disable the comments. I just recommend if you ever utilize, allow students to comment on one another that you are monitoring that, um, paying attention to what's being posted. Um, you could see where there's ways to moderate, um, which requires, you know, do you want to do you want to provide approval before things get posted? Things like that. So there are some settings that you can definitely explore. And then when you're ready to share, this little um, arrow is how you can share. And this is where it's links. Um, you can even embed and get a QR code. So you have some options. Um, and you'll, you'll see I can even export this as an, as an image where maybe I do want to share save what's been commented on this Padlet, I have that option. So that is Padlet as a collaboration board. It's one that, I, once again, I know a lot of teachers have utilized over the years. And most who use it stick with the free version, but if you find that you want to maybe upgrade, um, that's an option as well to get a little bit more accessibility to some of the um, extra features. The next one is the collaboration board that is available in Nearpod. So Nearpod is a program that is funded by our state legislature. So we actually in Canyon School District have full access to all that Nearpod provides. And with the collaboration board, uh, it's customizable. It provides that real-time collaboration, but a collaboration board could also be embedded into a student paced Nearpod. So maybe it's something that students are doing on their own time outside of class or it's not done in real time. Uh, one thing I would just recommend that if you are doing that as a teacher, you wanna be very much aware of what students are posting and that you are moderating that. You don't wanna provide a collaboration board and never go back and look at it. Um, and like Padlet, unlimited posts, so text, images, links, videos, files, those basic privacy settings, there are opportunities for moderation for commenting. And so the links that are on this presentation actually provide a video to like how you would actually create the collaboration board and just some more information. But just to give you an actual example, and your collaboration board does not have to be an entire Nearpod lesson. It could just be maybe a Nearpod that is a collaboration board. The example I have here is actually within a, um, oops, I did not mean to go out of that. It's actually in a, pres a Nearpod presentation that I utilized um, with some coaches about how to um, use Nearpod for explicit instruction. And you'll see where I was able to actually put the collaboration board in as part of my lesson. And so this is where when the students get this, um, they can share their thoughts at the bottom. There's the little share icon here. And um, I can set it up as the teacher. Let me go to teach and see if I can get there quickly for you. There's a way for me to set up where I'm, I'm approving. You'll see where there's even an opportunity to record. Um, let's just. I share that. Um, normally the teacher can actually, so on the teacher side, they can see what students are posting. So you can actually hide the name so students aren't seeing their names when they're getting posted. But also like uh, 
we saw in Padlet, there's opportunities for students to like and even provide comments. And so that's where, as the teacher, you would want to just set up your expectations so that students know what to do or not to do when it comes to sharing with the collaboration board. And you'll see up here, there is an opportunity for you to approve um, that gets set up in the settings of your Nearpod account. So there is a way for you to approve every comment that gets posted to the collaboration board, um, or you can moderate it as it's coming in. And something you're not seeing right now is there is a way if I see a post come in, I can actually X out as the teacher and um, get it off the collaboration board if something inappropriate or um, it shouldn't be on there gets posted. So that is the collaboration board in Nearpod. Uh, another program that we have access to um, in Canyons is Canva. And we have set it up in our district where teachers and students all have full access to the Canva Pro um, features. And that's utilizing your CSD Docs account. So if you have not signed in or utilized Canva and the, the full features we have access to, I strongly recommend it. And one of the features that not a lot of people know about or have utilized is the Canva whiteboard. So you, when you're using this, you can actually start from with a scratch, like a start from scratch, meaning as a blank template, or Canva provides tons of templates that you can actually start from. You have the same access to a lot of the Canva elements that if you've used Canva that you're familiar with. So like adding images, uh, GIFs, invite, embedding videos from like YouTube, uh, utilizing the time the timer the draw tool providing opportunities for commenting you have infinite space meaning as you continue to build you this is almost like you have this canvas that just you just continue to expand and you don't have to keep going in and manually changing the uh the size of the the, the template that you're using or the, the space that you're using. Um, I actually wish I would have known about this earlier because I was creating a flow chart and I was just doing it from a Google or a Canvas slide option or presentation option. And I, I had to keep expanding the canvas I was working in. And what I should have done is utilize the Canva whiteboard. Um, something else that's really cool is you can, if you have a Canvas slide presentation that you utilize or you've been using with students, you can actually take a Canvas slide and put it into the whiteboard and actually have it be part of um, that collaboration whiteboard experience. Um, you can enable quick flow. So if you were going to create um, like a flow chart of sorts or you want to connect specific elements or tasks, um, it does provide real time collaboration. So you can have students collaborating to a whiteboard all at once. So just like with Nearpod and Padlet. And what's interesting is you'll actually see um, students cursors are all different colors, letting you know who is who um, and what they're adding. And then you can adjust edit access anytime. So maybe you want the whiteboard to be editable by students, but then you want to change that and just have it be view only. So you can be doing that as well. And then there's opportunities to share and export the whiteboard that you've created. So on this screen, I have a video is about 14 minutes long, but it does go through a lot of the features. And she does a great job of just doing a quick demonstration of the Canva whiteboard. But I wanted to go over to Canva just to show you what this looks like. So if you go into Canva under create design, um, you can actually do whiteboards, but also you can go to the canva.com online dash whiteboard to get a little bit more specific information. So you can see on the screen where you have the whiteboard, there's sticky notes that you can drag over. Um, you'll see the cursor is different colors based on who's collaborating. Um, there's opportunities once again to utilize the timer. Um, you can utilize this zoom in, zoom out slider to adjust the um, the size, and then you'll see where when I said there's templates for you to start off of, you could use some of these templates, and then it's already there for students to go in and um, manipulate and add their content to. And one thing she talks about in this video is you want to be careful about the edit access you give students, because if the access you give is anyone with this link can edit, the students could actually edit some of the elements within that whiteboard. So you want to be careful about that and just ensure the collaboration board, um, how you're utilizing it, that you're giving students the correct access you want so that maybe they don't delete anything you're hoping they don't delete. But then with Canva, there are ways that you can lock and um, 
group certain images and files so that they don't go away. So that's Canva Whiteboard. And once again, this is a quick overview of some of these options for Jamboard alternatives or collaboration boards in general. In the future, we'll offer some bite-sized PDs that can go a little bit deeper into these options. And that I wanted to share that's an option is Lucid Spark. And something I've learned that uh, through the legislature, we are getting access to the full access of Lucid Spark to do so. And I'll provide a bite sized PD in the future to pro provide some more information about this. But to do so, you have to start in Canva, Canvas first, because once you connect your account in your Lucid account in Canvas, it'll automatically upgrade your account to the full features. And then if you wanted to, you could go directly to the Lucid website and do everything there. But what this does, once again, we have full access. Um, this is the program that if you have Jamboards that you wanna transfer over and still utilize, you can actually import Jamboard, Jamboards to Lucid Spark. Um, it has the same Jamboard features or same features as Jamboard, such as the sticky notes, shapes, text lines, even the pen tool. And like the other options that we've um, learned about, I feel like Lucid Spark is very much like the Canva whiteboard. You can emb embed videos, images, and files. They even have one of the teacher favorites is a way to embed Google Docs. So our CSD Docs files, like the Docs, Slides, and Sheets. Um, and also like Canva, you don't have to start with a blank slate. You can actually start from a template. And then some of the teacher favorites is there's facilitator controls. Um, and I'm gonna look at my, where you can actually monitor student engagement in real time. You can even click on a student as you see them working and follow that student as they are collaborating on the, the board. There's frames and paths, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment, but it's a way for you to use Lucid Spark as a way to uh, organize some activities in a specific path for students to complete. And then um, there's visual activities for a way for you to provide some check for understanding opportunities within um, the Lucid or the whiteboard, the collaboration board that you've created. And this video here does a great job of demonstrating these teacher favorites. So I'd recommend checking that out if this sounds interesting to you. But to give you an idea, so here's an example of a Lucid Spark that was created. And I, I kept this here because it says the person who created it has shared a path with you to navigate and so I can follow the path. And so this is where it's actually giving me some things to do so I can actually follow. And then you'll see where there should be a next. Click on the next arrow. I had to set up a second ago. Now I'm, I'm off. Anyway, I, there's a next arrow that I can click and it'll actually take me to the next. And there'll be videos for me to watch um, after a while. And I'm going to provide this link in the slideshow as well. So if you want to explore this, you have that option. But you'll see there's some things for me to learn. And then it'll actually have something for me to try out. So I could go in and I could actually move this around. I can actually add to it if um, that's what I wanted to do. And so a way for me to explore some of the features I just learned about in Lucid Spark. When you're in Canvas, you can be in any Canvas course that maybe you work you work in, or maybe even just like a sandbox type course that you've created just to explore in. If you go into like a Canvas assignment, or even when you're editing a page, and you can do it from anywhere, um, this is just how I was able to connect my Lucid account to get full access. If you go here, like so I'm editing, I go to the external tool option, which is like a little plug. If you click on View All, Lucid becomes an option. And you can type it or scroll. Lucid should be an option. Oh, so embed Lucid document. And this is where the first time you utilize this, it will ask you if the students you work with are younger than 13 or older than 13. So just take yes or no. Um, we have signed the proper documentation to ensure if anyone is younger than 13 that we are covered. Um, it's bringing me in here right away, but the first time you do this, it will ask you to connect your Canyon School District account, which then you'll get a message that says you have been fully upgraded to um, the Lucid Pro or to gain full access to Lucid. And then um, I'm not gonna go any further with this because I'll provide another bite-sized PD that walks through embedding Lucid into your Canvas course if you choose to do that. But this is where you now have that full access and you can 
go to the Lucid website and you can actually start playing around with the features and the whiteboard option as well, which this is very similar to Canva. Um, a lot of the same types of features available. Um, the main difference with Canva versus Luc Lucid Spark is that opportunity to create a path. Um, I'm not sure why my, or maybe this is it. I don't know why my arrow is not showing up. Cause when I did this the first time it was there and I'm not sure why it's gone. Maybe this is what I have to click on. No, I promise you it does work. I was doing this before and maybe I messed up the flow, but there are ways to click arrows and it takes you in order. So anyway, that is the Lucid Spark. So look for a bite-sized PD coming in the future if you, this seems interesting to you. And so thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. My name is Camille Cole. If you have any questions or want additional support or even more targeted training on any of the tools that you have explored, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to come meet and work with you. Um, my email is camille.cole at canyonsystrict.org. And once again, be on the lookout for some future Bite Size PDs that will go deeper into the Canva whiteboard and the Lucid Spark option. Um, we have, I have our Bite Size PD page linked for any past Bite Size PDs we've provided and a schedule of the upcoming ones. And if you would like the relicensure credit, please click on this link to uh, fill out the form and we will get that awarded once a month and the credit will appear on your Midas transcript.